Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to put a Boyas and Quick Start on a Honda 06 CRF 250R. So stay tuned for that. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the alert bell. That way you can come on back and check out what we got going on. Don't forget to smash the like button. Always appreciate that. So alright, let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so this is what we got in the kit. I got this straight from Boyasin. It was pretty fast shipping as well. Um, you got your setup here, which is your new accelerator pump cover. It's got your leak jet adjuster, and then it also has your new hot start cable. So it also comes with a cap for the leak jet adjuster screw. It's got a plug for both the leak jet right there that little silver set screw looking thing and then it also has your old hot plunger setup plug and the instructions are pretty simple i'll go ahead and read through them real quick it says to remove the carburetor from the engine to disconnect the factory hot start cable retain the plunger and spring for step 11 and then it says note removing the subframe is recommended drain all fuel from the carburetor remove the float bowl from the carburetor remove the stock accelerator pump cover from the float bowl keep the diaphragm spring and o-ring in the stock position it says that replacing the diaphragm o-ring and d-ring if the bike is more than one year old is suggested well we're not going to do that not today at least um, it shows a picture of the O-ring, the diaphragm and spring, then says step four to remove the D-ring from the stock of the accelerator pump cover and place it with a quick start, in the quick start. The flat side of the D-ring faces the cover and the top round side faces the float bowl. And it shows you where the D-ring is. Place the quick start over the spring on top of the diaphragm and secure to the float bowl. Remove stock leak, jet, and plug with supplied set screw plug with a two millimeter Allen wrench. That's what I showed you um, that was in the bag. It then says to adjust the low speed fuel screw one quarter to one half turn out richer from the stock setting. Set the leak jet adjuster to one turn out from the closed seated position, which if you go over here, it depends on what leak jet you had in there. I was at a 55, I went to a 45, so I'll probably end up being like in between three quarter and one turn out, so that's seven eighths is what I decided. Uh, so set the leak jet one turn off for the seated position. Dust cap is supplied to cover the adjuster knob. Under the plastic throttle cover is a timing adjusting screw. Boysen recommends original factory settings of 115 thousandths. So it shows right here, obviously that's what that is. Um, only if the original factory settings setting has been changed, adjust this timing screw as indicated, which I believe I changed it, so no big deal. Um, it says it reinstall hot start plunger and spring using the provided hex head plug. Reinstall carburetor in the engine. From the rear view of the carb, adjust the cable elbow to the 11 o'clock position to tighten compression nut, which is this. And then it says uh, route the route and install the new hot start cable, keeping two to three millimeters of play in the hot or in the handlebar trigger. Reinstall subframes needed and check all fasteners. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to go ahead and the one thing though, the one thing that I'm going to do though, because I don't want to have to take off my exhaust because I just put some titanium header shield on it. I don't want to have to undo this joint right here because it was pretty, um, let's see if I can get it there. It's kind of a pain to get that ceramic seal in there. So uh, I'm just gonna undo it here, take this plastic off, and then undo the other bolt, and then I should be able to take the sub for the seat off, the subframe off, without even having to worry about this, because this is on here pretty tight. I mean, I can go ahead and prop something up underneath there if I need to to support that during the time during the process. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, take the seat off. I'll take the seat off and the side panel and then I'll take the subframe off. I'll be back. All right, so this is my accelerator pump here. Um, I'm gonna see exactly where it's spraying. Oh my. It's not even like, it's almost like it's crooked. That's weird should be spraying straight. Uh, 
I guess it's not too bad. But you know, I wonder if that's probably causing a slight issue. But either way, I'm gonna look into that. Cause it's like it's spraying that way into that little post right there, which is where the needle slides. Huh, interesting. So I don't know if that can be twisted or not or what the situation is, but getting ready to take this thing out. So just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Okay, so at this point, all I did is I just took the subframe off and uh, this did work. I was able to leave the exhaust on there and I just propped it up to take any stress off of anything. And there was just a 10 millimeter bolt here and then the 12 millimeter up here that holds it on. And I took off the side plate, like I said, and then removed the bolts on both sides of the subframe down at the bottom, which were 12 millimeter heads, as well as the one that goes through the center here and the whole assembly comes off. And from that point, um, but before you, want, before you do that though, you wanna make sure that you undo both of your intake car boot clamps. And then that way the carb's loose and you can pop it off of the back side of the carburetor. So the next step was I just removed the rear shock here and then I'm gonna go ahead and pop off this black cover and then undo the throttle cables. I'll have to drain the carburetor. The fuel's already shut off, so I'll drain the carburetor. And uh, I have to undo the hot start cable as well, which is up in there. And it will be easier to get to once I take the fuel line off. So I'll do that and then I'll bring the carburetor back and we'll look at the carburetor. All right, so I got the carb off. I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembling, pulling the bowl off and stuff. First thing I'm gonna do is pull this out here. All right, so got this off. Checking to make sure my float is level. It still looks pretty good. Gonna remove the stock accelerator pump cover. I think I'm gonna use an impact. I'm gonna use a number two. There's the stock accelerator pump cover. We have our spring. This is our diaphragm. Looks pretty good. This is the D-ring. It's called a D-ring because it's flat on one side. If you were to look at the profile, the side profile of the ring itself, it actually is flat on the bottom and then looks like a D. All right, so we got the accelerator pump cover off. It says to take the D-ring. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little tiny bit of grease on it. That'll help it stick to the, the new cover. Just like that.
and it says to set the jet adjuster to one turn out from seated closed position. Okay, that's all the way closed. So I had a 45 leak in there, so I'm going to set it there for now. There's the dust cap. Hmm. That didn't look like it was in very good condition. I'm going to go ahead and use the stock. Pop out this leak jet here. Yep, that is a 45. And then it says to make sure that you have 115 thousandths gap here, but I have the O ring mod done to this. So I'm not going to change the setting much. What I wanted to do was dial this in on the bike. And now I need the plunger and spring from the hot start, but just consist of these two parts. So it's the plunger, it's the spring. Just put it together. I thought there was supposed to be a rubber seal down in here. Okay, so there's that. Go ahead and put the bowl back on. And last thing it says to do is route and install the hot start cable, keeping two to three millimeters of play in the handlebar trigger. And you will want the, from the back of the carb, it says you will want this cable at 11 o'clock. So we'll get this all put back on and go from there. And then I'm going to put a bigger pilot in here. It's a 45. We're going to go back to a 48. Plug was looking a little too light. All right, that is it. Let's go ahead and put it back on the bike. Okay, you got the carburetor back on, put the shock back on as well. Here is the new hot start cable that goes up under, routed where, basically where the old one was. And then it's gonna come up right here. And I got my new lever to put on there. So I just got this back uh, not too long ago from ASV, so that's going to be going back on there. I like this hot start lever a lot better. This one just seems to get stuck. Like, it, it's sticky. I don't know why. It's just the design, I think. Which seems like it's a Honda design, but I don't know if these are... Well, this isn't stock. At least the lever's not. The perch and this might be. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea if they had some type of ball bearing in there. 
because it just see I don't know if maybe I had this too tight or something sorry I don't know if I had this right here too tight um, but I even loosened it up and that loosened it up and it still just ends up getting stuck so I'm going back I never had any problems with this but I've never had this on the motocross track so we'll see okay so I ended up uh, was out here pretty late last night so I ended up calling in the night <clears throat> well I think I read the directions wrong because watch what happens when I push and then release the hot start button okay nothing there it's compressed now watch what happens when I release it <laughs> uh, so that's not right and then when I push the hot start button in and uh, twist the throttle it does the same thing so I started looking at the directions and lo and behold, yeah, it's. I just thought they got confused. Like, I just thought it was the paperwork saying, you know, 07 to 09 when really it's like 04 or 06 to 09 or something. Well, it says 07 to 09 installed this way. And then on the other side, it says uh, uh, installation for 250R uh, except 07 to 09. And so there's a, in the fuel bowl in the full bowl fuel bowl there's a check valve i guess and that's what that little pin is that they gave me you got to take that pin and pop out the check valve ball and spring so that's what i'm getting ready to do now and i'm gonna put it back together real quick and <laughs> i'm sure it'll work fine <laughs> so okay so we're back here at the bench i got the car bowl off um this is the the little check valve ball and spring that they're talking about so to get to that, I gotta pop this cover back off real quick. Set this aside. And that is what's gonna happen. So this will come out. Grab me another piece of wood real quick. All right. And it says to gently tap it out. That is where this guy comes in. Cool. That didn't take much at all. So those, that's what makes up the check valve right there, so. You can save this for later if you wanna. Put your carburetor back to stock. What have you. No sense throwing it out. Just gonna go ahead and put all this in there. Okay. So that was all that needed to be done. We got a plug and then we have our check valve removed. Let's reinstall our cover. I've heard of uh, people chopping down this little piece right here, this little nub, this button. Something along the lines of it allows it allows the spray to be longer, I think. So if we're still having problems as far as throttle response, that will be an option. But for now, we're not going to go there. You don't want to change a whole bunch of stuff at once anyways. You're always better to do one thing at a time. That way if a problem pops up, you have a better idea of where it came from. Okay. I'm going to go put it back on the bike.
times two. Okay, that's one, two. There we go. I'll take all of these, group them up. And then stuff them down. And those all get stuffed down in front of the wishbone down there. Your cushion bar is what they believe they call it. And go tighten up this other intake boot clamp real quick. Okay, so I got everything in. And just before I button up the shock and other stuff, I'm gonna turn. I got the fuel on. Um, fuel should be in the bowl at this point. So if I twist the throttle, I should get There you go. Okay. So there is a nice amount of fuel. So now, as before, when I would press the hot start lever, it wouldn't do anything until I released it. Oh, it's still doing it. So it's when I do it, when I let it snap, it will push. But just regular, it doesn't. So let's see if I push it and twist the throttle. Well, it's definitely a lot less. That's, that's weird. I'll have to contact them and make sure that that's correct, but at this point, I'm gonna have to go with, that is the way it should be. But it is Saturday, so I can't contact them now. I can, but I won't get a response until later. This after the weekend, obviously. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and button everything up and then uh, fire it up and do a couple tests, which will be uh, running it till it's hot, and shutting it off and then starting it back up hot and then I'll ride it again and then I'll lay it down and I don't know if I'll let it die or if I'll shut it off because it seems like if I laid it down on the track and I couldn't get it up in time to keep it running it would die or sometimes the clutch would be pushed in and it would stay running so I would have to hold the clutch to pick it up. Well, if I couldn't hold the clutch and pick it up to where it would stay running, it would shut off. So I'll have to mimic whatever situation happens when it tips over and floods and then we'll see how easy it is to start after that. So hopefully this does the trick. So we'll see, that's for sure. Okay, I just got back for a good, from a good rip. Um, I ended up doing probably, gosh, five or six laps around um, the field. But, you know, I did a lot. There's some barriers up because they're doing a little bit of construction over there. So I ended up just following the barriers and doing all kinds of turns, practicing my turns. And then, uh, you know, putting weight to the outside peg, keeping my leg nice and high, um, getting the right lean going. Not too much in, but enough to where, you know, I got some good uh, centrifugal forces, I guess you could say. And this is all flat, but it's grass, so. But uh, I did that, came back, shut it down, and I didn't even have, I didn't even have to use the hot start. Because for one, the hot start button is disabled. So just the way that that thing works, you can start it up uh, without even having to um, press any hot start button. It starts right up, it's awesome. Good job, boys, and good job. That's all I gotta say. Um, and then uh, that's the 48 Pilot, uh, 175 main, because I was at a 45, and I went down to uh, a 172 main. 
So did that and then um, I ran it a little bit more, you know, did went down the street and back and then uh, shut it off. First I laid it down and it didn't stall. That was when it was in neutral, but so I did that, didn't stall. So I ended up shutting it off and then I laid it down and I counted to like eight seconds, I think, eight to 10 seconds, you know, just giving myself a good leeway of, you know, why on earth the bike would be down that long if I'm in a race, I don't know. So laid it down for 10 seconds, picked it up and it was kind of hard uh, just the same way before. So um, I figured out the procedure, at least with my bike. Um, if it does lay down, all I have to do is shut the fuel off and then open the hot, well I press the hot start button which disables the accelerator pump then I open it full throttle let go of the hot start button or lever and then I hold my uh, stop button and then I kick it over 10 times and then I let go full throttle and then it'll start within like two or three kicks so that's good that's better than 40 seconds worth of kicking myself to death. So uh, that's good. And then I also figured out, and then, you know, obviously I got to turn the the, um, the fuel petcock back on. And I, I, the first time I forgot about it and it stalled down in the field, I was like, what the heck? I was like, oh, that's right. I bet I didn't turn the fuel back on. So um, yeah, it's it seems like it's pretty consistent with the 10 kicks. It'd be nice if I could get it down to like seven or eight even five, but I don't see that happening. Um, the other thing I figured out, which I can't believe this, everybody said you can't start these in gear. Well, for some reason now, with that hot start, with that voice and quick start, you can start it in gear. And I did first gear, second gear, third gear, all started in all three of those. So I am pretty happy about that. So, all right, uh, that's pretty much it for now. Um, I'm gonna end up taking this thing to Twisted MX tomorrow. They got a full day of practice, so. Um, Twisted MX canceled Friday Night Lights on Friday. I wasn't going anyways, but I feel pretty good today. Um, I did probably a total of, gosh, 15, 20 laps in a matter of, let's say, half hour. And so I don't have any arm pump. I feel good. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I will definitely keep you guys posted. If you have any questions about the boys and Quick Start, hit me up. I, I think I paid like 150 bucks for it total, shipped. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Put it down in the comment section about the Boyce and Quick Start. I highly recommend it if you've got an older carburetor bike, for sure. So, but that's it for the video. If you guys enjoyed what you saw and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you can come on back, check out what we got going on and make sure you smash that like button. I always love that. So we'll see you guys in the next video. So come on back, take care and God bless.